So, you're just getting started on Final Cut Pro and trying to find your way around? Well, you're in the right place because in this video I'll be showing you around the entire workspace and giving you a quick walk around of the entire layout of Final Cut Pro. Hey everyone, my name is Chad and welcome to Epidemic Media, the channel that is all about helping you make better videos by bringing you all the tips, tricks and tools that you'll need while editing videos. If Final Cut Pro is the first editing software that you've ever used or if you're moving over from a different editing software like Filmora or iMovie, I know that it can be a little confusing and that's why I decided to make this video and basically start from the ground up. Epidemic Media will be bringing you a lot more videos in the future that will help you become a better video creator. So if you want to be kept up to date with all of the latest videos, remember, hit that subscribe button. But that's enough talking, let's get into what you're actually here for. So when you open up Final Cut Pro, this is what you should be seeing on your screen. This is known as your workspace and you'll notice that your workspace is split up into a few different windows. Each of these windows serve a different purpose and I will explain exactly what you will use each of those for. The first one on the top left is your libraries. This is where you'll find all of the projects and events that you've created and pretty much anything that you're working on with Final Cut Pro. At the top of your libraries you'll see a few different icons. The first one shows you the exact projects that you're working on. The second one is where you'd find all of your photos, music stored on your iTunes and also sound effects. Now Final Cut Pro does come preloaded with a whole lot of sound effects so you can definitely check those out and the third icon is where you'd find your titles and your generators so if you want to insert different textures backgrounds or text like subtitles or credits this is where you'd find those the window second to the left is your events browser so this is where you'd be able to find all of your thumbnails if you have any clips imported into final cut pro now when you open up final cut pro for the very first time most of these screens are going to be blank you will have a new library right over here, but it will be called Untitled, probably not New Library. And over in your event browser, you'll just see a big arrow. And by clicking on that, you'll be able to import different clips into your Final Cut Pro. This area right over here is called your Viewer. And this is simply just a preview of the project that you're working on. It will show you exactly how your video is looking so that when you export it, you know exactly how everything looks. At the bottom of your Viewer, you will find a few little buttons right over here. The first one, if you click on the drop down arrow, it allows you to transform, crop or distort. Those are just different ways that you can manipulate and adjust the image. The second icon that looks like a magic wand gives you different options on quickly adjusting audio and color within your project. And the third icon is your retiming and that's what you'll use if you want to make a video faster or slower. This area right over here is called your inspector. As you can see there's nothing in the inspector right now but when you have imported clips and you are working on a specific project this is where you'll be able to have all of the controls that allow you to adjust the volume, adjust the picture size, a whole lot of fun stuff. I will create a video that shows you exactly all the different things you can do within the inspector. So if you want to see that and a whole lot more tutorials about Final Cut Pro, remember to hit that subscribe button. Now this largest window at the bottom is called your timeline and this is where you'll bring your clips into so that you can edit them to however you want it to look. There are a few different options at the top of your timeline as well. These are just various placement buttons so it allows you to place your clips from your event browser down into your timeline in different ways. The drop down menu right over here this is pretty much various tools that you can use while you're working in Final Cut Pro. The two that I use the most would probably be the Select tool and the Blade tool. The Select tool works exactly like a mouse would work and the Blade tool is for when you need to cut clips at various points to shorten it or to just make it fit in a specific area of your project. Now if you go over to the right, over this side, these little icons come in pretty useful. The very first one right over here, this is how you turn your skimming on and off. By skimming, if I bring down this clip right over here into our timeline, if I turn skimming off and I run the cursor across the clip just like this, you'll see nothing happens. You can't really see everything just stays as is. But if I do turn it on, and now if I run the cursor across the clip, you can see that it kind of gives you a preview as to how the clip looks. Just like that. I always leave skimming on just because it's a lot easier to work with and it just makes working within a specific project a lot easier and a lot quicker. The second one 
is exactly the same as the video skimming that you've just seen. However, this turns the audio on and off as well. The third icon that looks like headphones allows you to select a solo item. So if you have a whole lot of clips within your timeline and you only want to select one particular one, if you turn that on, it will kind of mute or disable all the other clips and just allows you to work with the one selected clip. The next one is your snapping. Now your snapping mostly comes into play when you are not working within the main timeline, which is this dark gray bar right over here. So if you have a video at the top, right over there, and you have snapping on, it snaps your clip into different frames, allowing it just like that. So as you can see, if I move it back and forth, it snaps it right next to the first clip, just like that. With snapping off, it kind of gives you free range and you can move it to wherever you want. I usually turn snapping on and off uh, multiple times while I'm working within a specific project. It just depends on what you need to do. And then we're on to the final two icons on the very right. The first one, right over that side, is your effects browser. So it allows you to add in different effects for your audio and your video. And the second one are your transitions. And that allows you, of course, to move from one clip to the other in different ways. If you scroll over your transitions just like that, it will give you kind of like a demo as to how each transition looks over there. And again, transitions and effects I will get into in some later videos. Now, since we are here and I do have a clip already within the timeline, as you can see earlier in the inspector, there wasn't anything. It was completely blank, but now you can see a whole lot of controls. And like I said, it allows you to adjust various aspects of your video or your audio and that's how it will look once you have video in your timeline. Last but not least are these four buttons right at the very top of your window. This allows you to show or hide different parts of your workspace. So for example if you click the first one it is going to hide your libraries. So now you can see your viewer, you've got your inspector and your timeline. If you turn that on you can see everything the way it was before. If you click the second button that hides your timeline and the third one hides your inspector. I would suggest just leaving all three of these on at all times just because you will be using each of these windows multiple times throughout every single edit that you're doing. Oh, and I almost forgot, we've got three more buttons right over here. The first one, which is your arrow, which is pointing downwards. This allows you to import different clips or media from your hard drive or from your desktop, wherever, into Final Cut Pro or into your libraries. The second button is a keyword search and that just allows you to quickly find various clips within Final Cut Pro that you have already imported. The third button is your background tasks and what this allows you to see is the status or the progress of Final Cut Pro. So things like rendering, sharing, uh, media management. So if you're exporting a file or a video, it'll show you exactly how far it is and how much more it has to go. And that is a basic overview of your workspace in Final Cut Pro. So now you at least know where everything is in Final Cut Pro. A pretty great place to start. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy this video and you did learn a little something, I would really appreciate if you could hit that like button and also drop a comment if there's anything else you want to see from this channel in the future. Even better, if you want to be kept up to date with the latest videos from Epidemic Media, remember to hit that subscribe button, which is also down in the corner, so that you know exactly when a new video is out.